Dan Hooker recently announced his return to his old division of 145 pounds, where his teammate, Alexander Volkanovsky, reigns supreme as champion. Speaking to the All-Star, Volkanovsky discussed whether he would accept the fight against Hooker if the UFC would like to make the fight happen. Is what he said. Obviously, people will be like, well, what if you have to meet? We'll worry about that when that happens, but at the same time, that's just like any other division. It doesn't mean because he's in this division, I'm not allowed to go there. That's not fair. If we have to cross that path, we will. Obviously, we're teammates and we're going to be supporting each other, helping each other out in camps, doing all that type of stuff. If we have to meet, we have to meet and you worry about that then. Nate Diaz is currently on the last fight of his contract with the UFC and has been looking for a fight for some time now. Despite showing interest in potential showdowns with Vicente Luque and Tony Ferguson, the UFC allegedly approached him with the idea of fighting Hamzat Chimaev. Diaz was not impressed by the offer and voiced his disgust during a recent interview with TMZ Sports. Is what he said. They're coming at me with Hamzat. And I'm like, hold on, don't disrespect me like that, trying to offer me a fight with a rookie. I'm cool, you got four fights in the UFC, don't even talk my name. I'm trying to fight somebody in the UFC, like ASAP, but nobody wants to fight. I've been trying to get somebody for a minute, anybody from the top 10. I've been trying to fight in any weight division, but they all want to keep their mouth shut because they're all scared. In response to what Diaz said, Hamzat Chimaev sent out a series of tweets on Thursday night going after the Stockton native. Here are the tweets. You fake gangster, Nate Diaz. And I don't care who to fight, I'm coming for everybody. Where are you, all the gangsters and kings? I'm here to kill everyone. I'm the king here. I'm a gangster here. You are the easiest money for me, thin Nate Diaz. Say hello to your older brother. Tell him not to be afraid of me. I don't beat old people. He knows what I mean. In Vegas, I just wanted to say hello. Well, poor man ran away. Speaking on a recent episode of the Weighing In podcast, Josh Thompson discussed how Islam Makachev would do against Justin Gagey and compared Khabib and Islam's strengths and wrestling skills. Here's the clip. Here, here, Go ahead. I get what you're. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Islam, though, is someone that can shoot from five feet away, snatch a single, and suck him up because he's so much stronger than Khabib. And I'm not. I know. Look, and I'm splitting hairs here. Like what I mean by so much stronger, when you're talking the top one percent of fighters. Okay, which is Islam and Khabib and Justin. He is, when you're talking about Khabib and him, when I say so much stronger, it's like 2%. Maybe he's 2% stronger. 2%, that 2% is huge. though is, is huge, huge when you're talking the 1% of the top fights, the top fighters. He, he will grab the single. He will suck it up. And when he gets to that position, he's going for a ride. And we saw how easy it was for Khabib to get the takedown. And when he got the one takedown, it became easier and easier. And that's what I think is going to, that's what's going to happen, I think, again to Justin Gaethje if he was to fight Islam. I can't speak on Benil Dariush at all because Benil is someone who is so well rounded. So is Islam. But Islam knows what his bread and butter is. I can't tell you what Benil, Benil Dariush is, what, what his bread and butter is because he's so damn good everywhere. He's got good, good stand up, but it's wild and crazy and leaves himself open. He's got good jujitsu, but he sometimes will make mistakes and put himself on bottom. He's good off of his back and he's good at getting up. But will that will he be able to do that against someone like Islam?
Recently, it was made official that a massive fight between top UFC lightweight contenders, Islam Makachev and Benil Dariush, has been booked for February. Speaking on his show on SiriusXM Fight Nation 156, Anthony Smith discussed Dariush vs Makachev and where they are in their lightweight title line. Uh, well, you know, I think that's the fight that, that needs to happen. Uh, I'm glad that, I guess that fight getting booked means that Gaethje's definitely getting the title shot after Poirier and Oliveira fight. So that's good. I think that that's the, that's the right move that, that Gaethje gets that shot. And I, my, kind of my, I guess my, I don't want to say, it's a, I don't want to make it seem like I have some knock on, on Islam Makachev because that dude's fantastic everywhere. But my knock on him kind of like in his trajectory is he hasn't really beat, he, he didn't have that one super sexy win. He has a bunch of wins over a bunch of really, really tough guys. But he, he's he's lacking that one that, that really is going to get people begging for him to get the title shot. So I think Darius is that guy. I think that they're both right there. Um, I think at any point in time, if, if there's not a valid challenger, like if Justin Gaethje didn't exist, both of those guys have a valid argument to a title shot. But Justin Gaethje does exist. So um, He sure does. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that, that Gaethje is getting – is seemingly going to get that title shot um and i'm excited for that fight uh, their their styles match up really well with each other makachev's a fantastic wrestler with an incredible top game and darius is a jujitsu wizard who who's really dangerous from his back and and has a really funky style so uh and darius hits hard he's got he's got decent takedown defense he's a big dude so uh stylistically it's a fantastic fight Clay Guida is scheduled to fight 41-year-old Leonardo Santos this weekend at UFC Vegas 44. Speaking to UFC News a few days ahead of the bout, Guida discussed the matchup and revealed that he wants to submit the 4th degree Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt this Saturday. Here's a clip. I feel fantastic. Uh, I heard it's my 55th professional fight coming up this weekend. Um, we're on our 15th year in the UFC and uh, it's been our most active year in a decade. Someone told me we haven't fought three times since 2011. So um, like Wooderson says, they get older and I stay the same age. So that's how we feel about our competition. But in this case, our opponent's a little bit older than us, which is hard to believe. So um, I feel like I'm going on 40 or I'm sorry, I'm for almost 40 going on 20. Uh, Leonardo Santos is a very skilled jiu-jitsu guy. His stand-up game is getting better and better. Uh, he's long and rangy, you know, which poses a problem for short, you know, stocky guys like myself. Um, we fought several guys that are a lot taller than us, and uh, we seem to do well against them. Uh, we we got to be patient, you know, and just get past his hands and then impose our will. Perfect performance Saturday night is finishing a black belt on the ground with uh, the old school rear naked choke, which is how we had our UFC debut back in 2006. <laughs> and, uh, UFC 64. That would be the perfect night. The perfect way to, uh, you know, end you know 2021. Another awesome. Year. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest MMA news.